hope. Hope you had your, uh, your burnt dirt or your raw egg this morning, whatever you prefer. I don't know what breakfast looks like at your house, but it is a good morning to be at church. I just wanted to bring attention to one of the announcements they said. We do need extra help at the State Fair. If you don't believe it, State Fair is this Thursday. How crazy is that, that it's already here on Thursday, and we need your help. You get a free ticket, you get free breakfast, and you get to serve. And the best part of all is raise money for Speed the Light, which is uh, one of the ways that we give to missions, uh, specifically our youth giving to missions. We were just at camp for a couple weeks, middle school and high school camp, and New Hope students, between the two weeks at camp, gave $17,000 just our students while they were at camp the last two weeks. So something to celebrate there uh, just at camp that that's happening. So would you help us support them as they support our missionaries all around the world? If you would turn in your Bible today, we're continuing our series in 1 Peter, and we're in the fifth and final chapter, 1 Peter chapter 5. We're going to be starting in verse 1 today, 1 Peter chapter 5. Starting in verse 1, if you're there, say, I'm there. If you're not, say, hold on. If you've got your paper Bible, hold it up. Hold up your paper Bible. If you've got your digital one, let me see the light. A few of them, I see it, I see it. First Peter chapter 5, starting in verse 1, it says, To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's sufferings, who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be. Not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive a crown of glory that will never fade away. In the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders. All of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another because God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. In the God of all grace who called you to be his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. If you've been here all throughout this series of First Peter, or if you've been reading through the book of First Peter, uh, you'll see that there's a, kind of been a theme throughout some different chapters in this book, and we see it again in this chapter, in chapter 5, and it's this idea of submitting, of being submissive that we are to submit to each other. Here in, in chapter five, we see uh, starting in verse one, it's speaking to the elders. It's speaking to, to those who are older in the church and it's saying to submit by serving, by discipling, by being a shepherd to those who are younger. And it's saying don't do this because you must do this, but do it because you are willing to do it. How many know there's a difference between doing something because you have to do it and doing something because you are willing to do it? Right, it's saying elders, serve, elders, be a servant to those, shepherd those who are younger, not because you must, but because you're willing. When you're willing to do it, you can tell the difference in someone's attitude. You can tell the difference in the language they use when talking about it, in, in their posture when they're doing it. It's saying you must be willing to do this. And then it says young believers, that you should submit to the elders, you should submit to the older believers, not because of respect just out of age, but also because of spiritual maturity. It's calling us to submit to each other, the elders and the younger believers. We see all throughout the church, all over, we see that there's this generational war that happens in church, right? You know there's some churches and there, it's an older church and there's some churches and that's a younger church and there's this constant generational war where maybe older are resisting change because church is how, I want church to happen how it happened when I was a teenager and it worked then and it can work now and there's that resistance to change. And you see the younger generation is resistant to the older ways. They want something new, something fresh. But here in chapter five, we see the, the answer to the problem and it's twofold. It's one, every believer, young and old, should submit to each other, and two, everyone should submit to God. 
submitting to each other and submitting to God. If you're taking notes this morning, uh, which you should be because it is proven that it is 10 times more likely that you will get into heaven if you take notes, (laughs) the first point today is to submit to each other. Submit to each other. When we think of this idea of submitting to each other, many times we think, well, if I'm submitting to someone, I'm becoming a slave to them. I, I, I'm, I'm letting them control me. But I want you to see this morning that submitting to someone is not just letting them control you, but it's letting them actually just be in control of the situation. There's a difference between someone being in control and someone being in control of you. And letting them be in control of the situation, it takes us being humble. It takes us being clothed with humility. Uh, we, we see true humility described in, first, or in Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. It says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Not your own interests, but the interests of others. How many have gone to a restaurant that you didn't want to go to before. Like you went and you ate lunch at a restaurant, they're like, I don't wanna go eat there, but you ate there, right? We've, we've all been there where we've gone to some other place. If, if you haven't, then this message is for you today, okay? But we've been there, why? Because we were with someone who we loved, who we cared about, who we were willing to submit to, and that's where they wanted to go for lunch. When you were at that restaurant, did you eat the food? Yes, because it was substance for your body. It was still good for you. Just because it wasn't the style that you wanted, it was still good food. When you went to that building, were you sinning? No. When you ate that food, were you sinning? No. But you were submitting to someone. You were letting them be in control. You were giving up your own interests for their interests. This should be something that as Christians, this is is just a simple example, but something as Christians we should do constantly. We are constantly submitting my interests to other people's interests. I'm submitting to one another. Uh, it, it, and we see that when we value others above ourselves, it, it brings so much blessing in your life. Look at verse five. It says, in your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. That's an important part there in, In verse six, verse seven, rather he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. It says that he did not consider his position uh, with God. He, he, didn't, he didn't use that to his own advantage, meaning he didn't use his title or his position to his advantage. You came in this morning and maybe you have a title, you have a position, and you've been using that to your own advantage. But today I'm saying that that title no longer matters. But we see that Jesus takes on the title of being a servant. So many times we see uh, positions as this hierarchy, like if I can just be up to this position or have this title, then I get to be the one who's in control. But we see Jesus, the son of God, who, who is at the top, he brings himself down to the bottom. He submits to others. He took on this new title. And today, I want to tell you, you have a new title of servant. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are a servant. You're a servant. Turn to the neighbor you just ignore because you don't like them as much and tell them you're a servant. Many times when we think of of a servant, we think the servants are the lowest one on the totem pole, right? So if I'm a servant, if I'm going to start acting like a servant, then i got to start thinking less of myself, I gotta start putting myself down, but can I tell you that being a servant is not thinking less of yourself, it's just simply not thinking of ourselves at all. There's a difference there. We have to stop thinking about ourselves. Here's a reminder for you, something that I want you to remind yourself of every single day. Ready for it? It's not about you. Oh, what an encouraging message from Pastor Zach this morning. Happy Sunday, everyone. It's not about you. If I was to title this message today, that would be the title. It's not about you. Something that I want us to remind ourselves of every single day. Something that causes us to humble ourselves. It's not about me. We're called to serve other people. How do we do that? By humbling ourselves. Verse seven says that he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant. Notice that it says he made himself nothing. 
He made himself nothing. It doesn't say he just became nothing, but he made meaning that it is a choice. Being a servant and, and making ourselves a servant and bring ourselves down, that's a choice that we have to make. It doesn't just happen. And of everybody that has ever been a servant, Jesus had every right to say, nope, I'm not gonna serve you. I'm the son of God. I don't, I don't serve you, you serve me. And guess what? That would have been okay. That would have been okay for Jesus to come and say, nah, I don't have to serve you, but you have to serve me. That would have been 100% okay, but guess what? Jesus, the son of God, comes from heaven to earth and he says, I'm here to serve you. That's something that we should learn from today, that he served, he submitted to others as the son of God. We know that Jesus, he served us in many ways. One of them, he went to the cross. He died for our sins on the cross. That was him serving us. Another is in John chapter 13, a story that many know. Picking that story up in verse four, it says, he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin, began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. Verse 12, when he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you, he asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. We see Jesus, he, he takes off his outer garments and he takes on a towel. He takes on being a servant and he's saying, this is what you should do for each other. You should start serving each other. I tried to think, how, how can I illustrate this today? How can I make this practical for today? What does that look like? And I thought, well, you know, maybe I could uh, come down and I could put on a towel and I could wash someone's feet in the room, but I thought that's disgusting. Uh, and if you're a normal person, uh, you would be like, no, please do not wash my feet right here in front of everyone at church this morning. The only person that would want that to happen is Pastor Weaver because he's weird, okay? So I thought that, that doesn't work. Well, how could I serve some people this morning? Maybe I buy some gift cards and I, I pay for lunch for some people and, and I say, here's lunch on me and that's my way of serving. But really we see that we're supposed to humble ourselves. And to be honest, if I'm paying for lunch for you, that's almost building my pride. Like, look, I can afford to buy you lunch today. So how, how, can, we, how can we illustrate this? And the best way that I could think of is me showing up to your house saying, hey, I'm, I'm here to deep clean your house today for free. No, no recognition, I'm here to deep clean your house. Or picking up your car and say, hey, I'm here to detail your car. I'm gonna make it spotless, it's gonna be beautiful for free, no recognition, right? Me doing something as a service to you that brings me nothing. That, that puts me down lower of like, I, I'm cleaning, I, I'm, I'm doing this dirty work for you. That's the best way I could think to illustrate this. In this time, the people that would wash feet were only the servants. So why is Jesus saying, I'm gonna wash feet? Because he's serving them. And he's showing them a few different things here as he washes their feet. We see that the first thing he's doing as he's washing their feet is, is he's showing them that he loves them. It's an act of love. We know that if we love someone, we serve that person. If you're married in the house this morning, if, if you love that person, you're serving that person. You don't get married to be served, but rather to serve. Every spring in youth, we do a series that we call All the Feels. And this series uh, it hits on dating, relationships, and sex. You may be saying, well, why are you talking about sex with middle schoolers and high schoolers? If you don't know today's culture, then you wouldn't understand why we talk about that as much as we do. But it, it, it's, a, it's a great series that we go through. But one thing that I always tell our students is, why do we date? What is the purpose to you dating? To find a future spouse, right? I tell them, I never want you to just to date people, just to date people, but you're dating looking for a future spouse. So I tell them, I need you to ask yourself these five questions. And if you say no to any of these, and if you cannot say yes, then it's time to say goodbye to that person. Question number one, do I see this person being my future husband or wife? Is there potential for that, right? You may not be able to answer that before you start dating, but if you start dating and you realize the answer is no, then I tell them say goodbye, right? Second question, could this person, would I want this person to be the future father or mother of my children? If the answer is no, then I tell them, say goodbye. The third one, my, one of my personal favorites, do I want to share a bank account with this person? <laughs> Some people are, are thinking they're dating here today and they're like, huh, that's a good question. 
If the answer is no, then you know what I tell them? Say goodbye. The fourth question, would this person and I handle conflict well? If the answer is no, then say goodbye. And the fifth and final question, would I want to serve this person daily? Can I serve this person every single day? Because it's not about what can that person do for me, but what can I do for them? How how can I serve them? Because we know that when we love someone, we serve that person. So we see by washing the feet, Jesus is showing them, I love you. And number two, we're seeing a foreshadowing of the future. He's sitting there and he's serving them by washing their feet, but we know soon he's gonna go to the cross and serve them by washing away their sins. And we also see Jesus is showing them an example of this is how you should serve each other. You humble yourself and you serve one another. Take a moment right now, look all around this room. Look all around. Every single person here, you are called to serve each other. You're called to serve and to submit to each other. As you leave this room and you're in the lobby and there's people leaving Sunday school, there's people coming to the 11 o'clock service, look around because you're called to submit and to serve to those people. They may be going to a different service. They may have gone to the eight o'clock service. And you're saying, well, eight o'clock is the holy people. Like they wake up super early. They're holier than me. Like I don't need to serve those people, right? But guess what? You are called to serve them. You may be seeing the people come for 11, you're like, well, those people come to a little different style of service than I do, but can I tell you that just like you submitting to someone and going to a restaurant that maybe you didn't like, it's it's all the same God that we're worshiping, right? We could all go to El Rodeo after service today, right? El Rodeo, we're all there, and you may order one thing. Guess what? Everybody else is probably gonna order something different. Is that wrong for them to order something different? No, but guess what? You're all still eating Mexican food. Just because it's a different thing, just because it's a different style, guess what? We're still worshiping and serving the same God. But every person you see, you are called to submit and to serve those people just as Jesus did. But it takes us being humble to serve. Have you noticed that? That you can't be proud and serve. It takes us being humble. Something that so many struggle with. Even the disciples struggle with, that, with this idea of being humble. They wanted to see who was going to be the greatest. Look at Mark chapter nine, verse 33. We see they, it says this, they came to Capernaum. When he was in the house, he asked them, this is Jesus, what were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. That's a dad move right there, right? What were you arguing about on the road? Maybe some of you guys, as you came to church this morning, that was happening, like the kids are in the back seat arguing, I'm the favorite, no, I'm the favorite, right? And the dad just knows, like, what are you arguing about? Can you imagine being called out by Jesus for arguing about who's the greatest? Crazy, they're arguing about who's the greatest. Verse 35, sitting down, Jesus called the 12 and said, anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all the very last and the servant of not just the people who act like you or talk like you, but the servant of all. They had a desire to be great, but what we see here is that true greatness is not a matter of outward position or recognition, but it is inward humility. True greatness, you wanna be great this morning? It's not a matter of your outward recognition. It's not a matter of your position that makes you great, but it is your inward humility that makes you great. We see that inward humility, that it leads to submission. It leads to serving other people. So we see point number one, that we're to submit to each other, and this can be hard, right? It's hard to to serve other people. Have you ever noticed that when you submit to someone else, it takes some grace? to do that, it takes grace to to submit, it takes grace to serve, so we see that, that we submit to each other, but first, even though it's point number two, the first thing we need to do is we need to submit to God. Point number two, submit to God. We see that we can't submit to each other, and we can't submit to God if we are proud. Proverbs three, verse 34 says, he mocks proud mockers, but shows favor to the humble and the oppressed. We see that God, he resists the proud, why? Because he hates the sin of pride. God hates pride. It was pride that turned Lucifer into Satan. It was pride, a desire to be like God that led to Eve eating the forbidden fruit. 
The pride of, of life is evidence of worldliness. And you don't want to know the cure for pride? It's the grace of God. It's God's grace that is the cure for pride. And we see that as we submit to God, we receive that grace. We receive the grace of God when we submit to him, and there's evidence of that grace as we submit to each other. You receive God's grace when you submit to him, and there's evidence of God's grace in your life as you submit to one another. But here's why submission is hard. Here's why it's hard for us to submit to each other. Here's why it's hard for us to submit to God is because submission is an act of faith. It takes faith to submit to God. Because as you submit to God, you're saying, God, whatever you want to happen is gonna happen in your time and your way. It's submitting, it's, it's releasing control of that situation. It's hard to submit to other people. It's an act of faith because it makes yourself vulnerable. It puts you in a place where you could be hurt as you submit to other people, but it's an act of faith saying, I'm submitting to God and he's leading me to submit to these other people and to serve in this way and I'm trusting that his hand that is over me as I submit to him is over them as I submit to them as well. It's an act of faith. Submitting, it isn't easy, but can I tell you that submitting will lead to your best life. Submitting and serving, it leads to your best life. First the cross, then the crown. First the suffering, then the glory. We know Moses was under God's hand for 40 years before he went to Egypt to free the Jews. We know that Joseph was under God's hand for 13 years before he was elevated, lifted to that throne. But one of the evidences of our pride in our life is our impatience with God, right? As we submit to God, it takes us also being patient with God. Maybe the reason that you are suffering, maybe the reason that you're going through that thing, refer back to last week, is that God's trying to teach you to have some patience. Patience is a difficult thing, especially in today's culture, right? I can get on Amazon and I can order something here tomorrow. And if not tomorrow, it's gonna be here in two days. And even then, two days, like I'm checking shipping. When is my package going to be here, right? It, it, it's, it's, an easy, it's easy in our world today to be impatient. I can get on Netflix and I can pull up whatever show or whatever movie I want. I've got a question, I don't have to go to the library to look for an answer, I can just search on Google. I've got the answer right here. But I promise that as you submit to God, as you submit to others, and you're patient in the process, that God's gonna bring blessings on your life. Submitting is the best place to be because we know that as we submit to God and as we submit to others, it leads to verse seven that says, cast your anxiety on him because he cares for you. One of the greatest privileges of this relationship that you have with God, of submitting and giving stuff over to him is that you can cast your cares and your anxiety to him. All of your worry can go to him. Just think about that for a moment, how amazing that is, that the God of all the universe, the God that created everything, everyone, the God that knows everything, knows every single person, how many hairs are on their head, that he wants to take on your burdens. That he's saying, give that to me, you don't have to worry. But we can't take that promise of verse seven unless we first do verse five and six and submit to God and submit to each other. But it's so easy when circumstances are difficult, when life gets hard for us to start to worry, right? For us to take on that worry, for us to take on that anxiety. But when we worry, can I tell you that it, it ruins us as a witness, being worried, it, it, it damages us as being a witness, but we need this inward peace that, that shows people all around us that I'm in a tough situation, I'm going through a lot right now, but I have peace because I'm submitting to God. Oh, do you have peace because of the medication? Do you have peace because you're doing some sort of new yoga? What, where is this peace coming from? No, my peace is because I submit to God. I'm giving him all of my cares. I'm giving him all of my worries. Now, let me, let me make sure that you're not hearing me say the wrong thing because some of you heard, just heard me say, man, give God everything and you don't have to worry about it ever again, right? And you're like, wow, I got bills piling up. I'm really worried about paying all of them. I guess I can just give them over to God and he's just gonna pay them. This is amazing, right? But can I tell you, he's already paid a debt that you couldn't pay. And he's not gonna pull you from the problem, but he's gonna walk with you through the problem. Jesus wasn't just taken off the cross and, and, and the problem's gone. No, he, he went through that moment. God will walk with you through that moment. And I believe that as we submit to him and surrender to him, he's gonna do a miracle in your life. 
And here's how I believe he's gonna do a miracle. Here's how I believe that he's gonna walk through that situation with you. And there's gonna be four things that come onto the screen that as you surrender to him, that he's gonna help you with. Number one, he gives us courage to face our cares honestly and not run from them. As you submit, he gives you courage. Number two, when we submit, he gives us wisdom to understand the situation. Number three, he gives us strength to do what we must do. And four, he gives us faith to trust him to do the rest. These, all of these things are miracles that God does in our lives when we submit to him, when we give him control. Understand this this morning, you can't do it on your own. Wow, what an encouraging message this morning. It's not about you and you can't do it. But really, that, when we think about that, that should give us peace. Like, the weight is lifted off your shoulders. The focus isn't all on you. It's not about you, and you can't do it, which means someone else can. It's not about you, and you can't do it, and that's okay, because as we submit to God, he brings those miracles into our life. And that situation that you're facing, you came in this morning and there's a situation you're facing, and it doesn't lead to joy or happiness, but rather it leads to anger, leads to bitterness, it leads to fear. And you never seem to be able to, to get over it. God's saying, just give it to me. I got it from here. Let me walk with you through that situation. We see that Jesus, he, he, he's the perfect example in everything. Have you noticed that Jesus is the perfect example? We see that even in submitting, he's the perfect example. The person who really shouldn't have had to submit, he submitted. We know that he submitted to God the Father, right? He came from heaven to earth, he died on a cross. He submitted to each other, he served the people around him, he washed their feet. And one other thing that I wanna challenge you with this morning that, that, that God spoke to me as I was preparing this is he submitted to government. He submitted to the government at that time. Maybe you're saying, well, that's different because the government was so much different back then. Like, it was, it was much healthier at that point. Really? Because was Jesus supposed to be arrested? Did they have any right arresting Jesus? No. Did he fight it? Did he argue it? No. Well, they should have taken care of it in the courts, but they didn't, right? We know he went to the cross and died. But what Jesus was doing is he was submitting to the will of the Father, and he was trusting that as I submit to God, I'm not in control of what's going on around me, but I'm walking through this because I know that he's in control of it. I know that he's got a better plan and a better way and that his glory is gonna shine through this. Man, the, the, the Bible so often seems to be so different than the world. Right, it's, it's like backwards from how we view things in our world. Right, we know the Bible says to be exalted, you must be humbled. To live, you must die. To be strong, you must be weak. To be a receiver, you have to be a giver. And the third and final point that I want you to see this morning is this, submission leads to victory. Submission, it leads to victory. If you've ever watched UFC cage fighting, right? They're, they're fighting each other, they're trying to get the other person to submit to them. They're trying to put that person in a position where they have to tap out and say, I submit to you. If you submit, you lose. But here in the Bible, we see that if you submit, you win. You win. First Peter 5, 8, this is how lots of us try to win the battle. It says, be alert and so remind the enemy, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. We take that and we say, this is how I've got to, to have victory. We just take that one verse and we say, this is all I've gotta do is I have to be alert. Or we take James four, verse seven, that says resist the devil and he'll flee from you. So we think, okay, if I can just in my own determination, if I can resist the devil, if I can be alert, then I'm gonna have victory over the sin. I'm gonna have victory over that. And guess what, for a short time you will. But did you know Satan is relentless? He comes and he comes and he comes time and time again. He's pressuring you, he's pressuring you until you finally give in and it leaves you just feeling broken. Like, how did I end up this way? But what I wanna show you today is what the beginning of verse seven in James chapter four says. It says, submit yourself to God, resist the devil. Remember what you're supposed to do first. You're supposed to submit to God because submission leads to victory. 
You see, the key to spiritual victory is not in your own resistance of the devil, but is in your complete submission to God. You wanna have spiritual victory? It's not just how can, how can I resist Satan, it's how can I submit to God. Would you stand with me this morning all around this room? So how do we do this? We are saying I, I need spiritual victory. There's a battle that I've been fighting and I need victory in that. So how do, how do I submit to God? Maybe you're saying, man, this morning, I, I just need to submit to God. I've never done that before. I wanna submit to God. I wanna give my life to him and, and begin following him. Or maybe you're saying, I've been following God. I've submitted myself to him. But if I'm being honest with myself, I'm full of pride. And that pride has kept me from submitting to other people. It's kept me from serving other people. Maybe you're here and you, you view yourself as, as this holier person. Like you, you have a hard time admitting that to yourself, but you view yourself as that. And today it's time to, to be humble, to be clothed in humility and submit to other people. But first I wanna attack this because lots of times I believe there's things that block us from receiving everything that God has for us. There's a few things that, that I felt God lead me to for things that maybe you've been struggling with in this room that are blocking you from receiving, that are blocking you from fully submitting to God and fully submitting to others. And it's anger. There's some people in this room and there's a lot of anger built up in you. Anger at a person, anger at a situation, angry at God. There's fear. Fear keeps us from submitting. Why? Because it's, it's scary to not have control. And maybe you're here this morning and you, you recognize there's a lot of fear in me and it's preventing me from fully receiving everything God has for me. And the last thing is unforgiveness. We know that God can't forgive us unless we forgive others. And maybe there's some people, even in this room, some people outside this room, maybe it's even to God and you're just angry and you have a hard time forgiving God for a situation that happened. But can I tell you that that unforgiveness is blocking you from receiving everything that God has for you. So what's our response this morning? Maybe there's something, maybe it's one of those things that I named, maybe it's something else, maybe it's an addiction, pornography, a drug, whatever that thing is. Today we have to surrender that to God. We surrender that over to him as we submit to him and say, God, I'm following what you are speaking to me. I'm following what you want me to do. And as I submit to you, I'm gonna to submit to other people and serve. As I receive your grace, that grace is evident in how I treat and, and serve other people. So really, the, the big picture response today is that when you leave here, you start submitting to other people because that's evident that you've submitted to God when you submit to others. But how do we respond right now? Maybe you have something that, that you need to surrender and I'm gonna invite you just to come forward in just a moment and just say, God, I, I give this over to you. And you're in a place where you're saying, man, it's, I, I need to submit. I need to submit to God. I, I, I haven't fully surrendered it all and I invite you to come forward and say, God, I submit to you. I surrender to you. And maybe it's, man, I, I'm pretty good in my walk with God, but really my walk with God is, is me submitting to God and it hasn't shown in me submitting to each other. And today I recognize that it's time that I start serving other people. It's time I start submitting to others around me, that it's not just my preference, but what do other people want? And we're gonna respond in that way and we're gonna worship God and we're gonna surrender to him. And I believe that we're gonna start seeing breakthrough. And I believe that's gonna be evident in the world around us because when we are full of God, that just pours out of us as we go out these doors. So I'm gonna pray. When I say amen, we're just gonna spend some time surrendering those things over to God. If that's you, you can come forward in that moment. But let's just worship him this morning. God, I thank you that you're a good God, a faithful God. I thank you that, that you love us so much, that you sent your son Jesus, that as Jesus was on this earth, that he, he was submitting to you by coming to earth, that he submitted by, by going on the cross, that he served, that he washed feet, that he did so many things. And I pray that today that we would learn from those things, today that we would begin serving others, submitting to others, that it would be evident in our grace for other people. God, I pray for those people in this room this morning that are struggling with unforgiveness, that are struggling with anger, that are struggling with fear, God, I pray that as we surrender those things to you, that we would be so full of the joy and the peace and the patience 
that comes from you, God, that your Holy Spirit would just begin to flow over us, that as we submit to you and we leave these doors, that we begin to submit to others. God, we thank you for what you're about to do in this moment. We surrender all of it to you. We give you this time. In your name we pray, amen. If that's you and you need to submit, if that's you and you need to surrender, the altars are open, but let's worship God for a few moments. Surrendering when we think of going to battle is the way that you would lose. But once again, it's the opposite. It's how we win. It's how we win. We submit, we surrender, we release control, and we see victory over those battles. But it takes us submitting to God and to each other. So really, as you leave here this morning, there's, there maybe is gonna be an argument in the car. Where do you wanna go to lunch? I don't care, where do you wanna go to lunch? I don't care, where do you wanna go to lunch? What do you wanna watch today? I don't care, what do you wanna watch today? Well, I know football's on today, honey. It's, it's first Sunday back of, of football. No, we don't need to watch football today. What do you wanna watch, right? It's submitting to each other. But let's be so full of the Holy Spirit that his grace and his mercy for other people, it flows from us to other people that it, we're a light in the, every place we go. We love you. Pray you'd have a great Sunday and we will see you back tonight at six o'clock. Pastor Luke's got a word. Have a good day.